All right. All right, so here we're gonna go with start of Tinkercad. Um, what it will do is we're gonna walk through some more of the Tinkercad, have you do a little bit of the tutorials, and then talk about maybe adding vector graphics in your Tinkercad. So when you come to Charlotte, you're gonna use 3D print, and we're gonna do some laser cutting, okay? Next week, we're gonna show you a program where you can take an object and cut it up for a laser cutter, and you can make all kinds of cool things from bowling ball and pins, to uh, dinosaur heads and stuff. It's pretty neat. So anyways, all right, here we go, Tinkercad. By now, I hope everybody's got an account. And I'm just drop you over here, all right? So let's go into basic movement and camera controls. And uh, object interaction was all fancy words for saying, hey, let's move everything around, make sure we can see it. And then how we can make holes and use some different tools. Remember, you can take an object. It can be moved by either clicking and dragging or using your keyboard arrow keys. It also will show you how much you change. All right. Objects also snap to grid. In other words, they move to so far in your Tinkercad. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let me go ahead and show you both examples of this. I'm going to go to new. And then folks, in a minute, I'm gonna have you do the same thing so we're all on the same page. All right, I've got a new one. I'm gonna go over here to a geometry. I'm gonna take a box. And I can use my arrow key to move that around. And I can use my mouse to move that around. Plus it's giving you directions how, what kind of values we're getting as I'm moving it. And the snap to grid is where it clicks and it's saying it's One point, you can even get it this tight where it's a tenth on the grid. So it's very, it slows much more accurately. But sometimes you don't need that accuracy, so you don't worry about it. But snaps to each one, and there's a grid here. There's a little distance, a set distance every spot. And this allows you to go from one spot to the next. It always puts you on one of these lines right here when it snaps to the grid. So can I get everybody to use your mouse? And use your keyboard. Oh, let me get my get my screen up. I don't think you were seeing my screen. So again, you're going to take a block. I'll push it right here. We're going to use the keyboard to move it. You can see I'm moving it very slowly that way. Or I can use my mouse. And my snap to grid, if I make it one, you saw a little move. Now if I make it five, it's going to move big bigger chunks and when you're working with big objects it's fine but sometimes you're working with really preciseness you can do one and it's going to move very slowly because it's going each to each grid mark or you can turn it off all together and you do that down here it's at, at the grid okay All right, Charlie's signing out and signing back in. No worries. Okay, raise your hand once you've got you've done this, so I know that you've done it. Okay, so that way I'll just go at a pace that suits everyone. Raise your hand when you've done it, folks, so that way I know you've shown it. So we, we've got 
A lot to do here, so as soon as you raise your hand, I can get going. So if, um, hopefully Charlie's back on and doing it. All right, Charlie's back on. He says, I'm here. Charlie, make sure you can do that. Sophie, Maddie's done it. Hopefully Sophie has gotten this. So we can go on to the next one. Again, not a big rush, but we don't want to. We got people that are ready to go. All right. Now, we'll look at my code there. So that showed you moving something, and you can change the colors. All right, let me go back here. You can go up to this little icon up here, and this will help you move around. That pushes over the top of this. screen and back and then you can use this up and down arrow that that roll rotates it forward like we're going right on our side that takes us back centers us but we rotate either way so once you have the object if you really need to do it just click on the house it'll put you there that zooms you in a little bit that takes you back out that zooms out the plus zooms in you can also If you use the right mouse key, you can move around. It's really important you get in the habit of looking around objects because, again, we're looking at something that's two dimensionals and we're trying to make it three. Your screen's flat. These cubes are not. Okay? So everybody play with this button right up here, and then we're going to talk about changing the name and design stuff. We do need to do that. So go ahead. I'm going to put your hands down. Let me know once you've tried that. All right, remember, raise your hand once you're done. Okay, let's go on to next. Okay. We They talk about the orange area, and then if you make it a hole by grouping them. Okay? So I'm going to show you. Before finishing the wrench, we, you're going to do that in the lab where you make a wrench in the tutorials. Let's go back to this. Let me give you a... Whoops. So let's say I had this rectangle here. And something you should know, if I click on a white, I can just squeeze it that way. If I click on a white this way, it's pulling it out. If I want them all to get bigger or smaller, I hit the shift key and then pull it up and down. Then it, the whole thing, the, everything scales at the same rate. Go ahead and try that real quick. So if you do the whites, you don't hit shift key. You can make them smaller, bigger. If you hit the shift key, the whole scale. Whereas if you do just one white key, look at that. You made this area smaller, but you didn't change this area at all. If I want them both to change, I hit the shift key. Now the whole thing will get proportionally shrink. So if I want the same box, I just want it smaller, that's how I do it right there. Okay, now say for example, I wanted to put a hole in that box. All they're doing is we'll take this cylinder and you could use any shape. You just click on its silver to make it a hole. And then I'm gonna grab it 
move it over here. I'm right in the center of the box. We'll talk about centering in a minute. I have it all like this. Then there's something called a group. So if I select both these objects and then hit group, it'll punch a hole through there. So let's go through that again together. I pull out the cylinder. I'm going to make a hole. I click on gray up here for hole. I then move it over here. So I move it where I want to make the hole. Like I can make the hole come like so I get a half semicircle there. Let me turn around there so I can see it. All right. Then I group these objects. And there's lots of reasons to group objects. The first reason I'm showing you is to make a hole. Click on group up here. And there's our hole. You know, you can play with this. Let's see what that looks like. Can group it. Whoops. If I group it and I don't make it a hole, it just becomes part of it. So I can move it around with it. So that's the other reason we group things. If that wasn't grouped, let me show you. And I moved it. It would move along with it. So a lot of times we group things so we don't have to, we can move them all together. And then we do that is by selecting all the objects that we want to group and we click on group. And you'll know you did it because it'll change color to match that. All right, that was a lot to do right there. Folks, try putting a hole in there and putting another object in that isn't a hole, but just combining it with that object. Remember to use group and ungroup here. Let me know once you've got it, guys. Raise your hands once you've done that. All right, let me see if we got a question here. Mine will not punch a hole. All right, let me show you again how to do this. I'm going to use another cylinder. First step, make it a hole. Second step, let's make this hole a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take my shift key, and I'm going to make the whole thing smaller and bigger that way. And I'm using this Y and white, and I'm going to pull it up some more. All right, there it is. Now that I'm ready to make the hole, I group, I select both components, the hole, the gray and the yellow, and then click on group. There you go. Try it now, Jackson. Once you've done it, folks, raise your hands. So we go on the next part. Okay. All right. Excellent. So basically, that's what's happening here. You're taking this hexagon prism, we make it a hole, and then we group it together, and you end up making your wrench in that tutorial. We just talked a little bit about the object on the dots. We'll get to those arrows in a minute.
that arrow raises everything up and down. White dot will make something shorter, wider, smaller, or you click them in and they do it all together. So let's just real, just, I know we've done it, but just one last time. So I'm clicking here. I'm gonna roll around this way. If I click on this black, it'll move it up and down. All right, if I do this, I click on a white, it'll make it, you know, in this case, it's making it wider that way. If I want it to uniformly, meaning that all the corners get the same, sides get the same, get big at the same right, I just pull it out like this or I shrink it down like this. All right. Good. So then the next thing is this angle. Let me show you this. If you take your mouse out to here, you can grab it. If it's closer to the box, it moves in bigger chunks. See how that is? If you go farther out, it goes in little finer movements. So again, you take that arrow, go out farther, finer move. It's inner, it's closer chunks. Also, to notice there's different arrows. This turns it this way. So again, on the importance of moving around to look at things, the arrows will move according to where you are. And here's this movement. And the way to get this is by moving around. I think it's easier to use the right mouse button and spin around. Go ahead and try that. Raise your hand once you've done that a couple times. I got it. I don't get it. Wait a minute. All right. Let me try again. Let me show you. I'm going to move into that red box. Click on it. You can look around. You'll see these little arrows. Oops. All right. Let me go down here. All right, see the corner arrow there? I'm gonna grab it. I can turn it like this. If I want, that's big gross, that's big large changes, right? If I go farther out, I can do tiny changes. Did that help, Sophie? All right, again, raise your hands. All right, we got everybody saying they got it done. All right, great. All right, we talked about that. All right, now I want to show you an important tool that they don't really talk nearly enough about in these videos. If say I say I wanted to make this very precisely, that bottom is 140. That says right down there. That's a width of 14.78 millimeters. And tell you, I want to make it exactly 15. That really, you can't type or do anything unless you pull out. <coughs> Pardon me. The ruler. <coughs>
So you go up to, let's close this up. There's helpers. That's what we want. And that's what the ruler is going to do. We're going to put this ruler here. Okay. Now I can type in exactly what I want. In this case, I want it to be 15 millimeters. I hit 15. I want this one to be 15. I type 15. I want this one to be 10. 10 it is. So it's exactly what we wanted. I want it off this, the bottom exactly zero. There it is. Click on it. It's zero from the bottom of the grid or bottom. 10 high, 15 wide, 15 high. Uh, 15 by 15 by 10. And that's made possible by doing the ruler. I move the ruler far out so it, I can drop other objects in there if I want. I'm going to put everybody's hands down. Raise your hand once you think you've got it. Or type me a question if you've got a question. So, Sophie, did you get it? Or do you still need a hand? Just write me an answer. You've got your hand up. And I said, put that up if you are uh, got it done. But I also said, put your hand up to help you. So that might be a bit confusing. All right, good job, Sophie. All right. Good job, everybody. Okay. Now, that's one tool. Let me show you this again. Here's another tool you use. Workspace. You're going to put that on there. It'll flip over. But say, say I want to put numbers down here because there's all kinds of things you can add in here. These are all geometric. I'm going to shut that down. But say I want to put the number three. Well, I can put that on the top. I'll line it up there. Move it over here. Lift it up. And then push it over. And we're making things for 3D printers. We don't want to just set them on top. We want them shoved into things. That way the 3D printer has it. Now, there's three. But say I wanted to put a three on the front side of this. The quick, you could theoretically take the three start using an arrow and tilting it up you know that's one way you could do this there's a little bit quicker way that's where you take your workspace and we put it right like this now let's get rid of this one when i drag three it will automatically go right facing that let's go ahead and we'll get make a little bit low where's that move this low all right there's my black I'm trying to figure out why it's so I'm going to pull it out there now I'm going to make it a little bit smaller is what I was really just trying to get this corner up here. Make it a little bit smaller. Now that black arrow, because the way the workspace is coming, is coming out towards me. 
And then if I hit W again and just click anywhere over here, it'll be back to where it was. But that's, that is sometimes really useful to do it that way. And all you get is you go to Workspace, or type the letter W, and just put it on the face you want to stick it on. And everything will line up on that face. Then once you're happy with the two of them, you can group them. All right, I'll ungroup those. Go ahead and see if you put a three on the top and three on the bottom. Okay, um, Sophie, I'll ask you a question here so I can figure out what you need. Hey, Sophie. Hello, Sophie. I don't know if you can hear. I don't. Maybe you don't have a mic. Um, I need a little more evidence of what you don't know how to do so I can help you, sweetie. I know how to get it on top of the shape. Well, come here. Let me show you again, Sophie. All right. You're not the only one, probably. You click on Helpers. Select Workspace. And then put the workspace on top of wherever you want it to be. Like, I could put a workspace on that number three if I wanted to. And then I could put the letter C. Well, I wanted to shrink this down. I don't know why I would do what I'm about to do, but we're going to do it. Put that up. Drag it over here, and I can put it right on three. Once I get it where it needs to be, I should say. Okay, I wouldn't really do that. That'd be kind of silly. But there it is. Hit delete to get rid of an object. And you can group them. Got it, thanks, good. Again, I'm gonna really recommend you do these tutorials and this will just drive home what we're doing. All right, now let's go ahead and let me show you something else we can do that will help you this. Or raise your hand, folks, if you've gotten it. You've gotten a three on the top, three on the bottom, and then I know I can go on. I will wait to find out. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going over here. And we're going to go ahead and pick up another object. We're going to go ahead and pick up 
box over here. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to take that white square right there. Pull it all the way out. Whenever you change the workspace, you lose your ruler. So I'm going to go back over to get my ruler. Whoops. Let me do this. I want to make sure. All right, I want to get rid of that. All right, good. So I'm going to move down my workspace a little bit. I'm going to take this ruler. There we go. All right, here we go. Then I'm going to take this. And we'll go ahead. I'm going to click on this white. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So honestly, with my ruler, I can, I can say exactly. So I said it's 12.4 high, 12.4 millimeters. We're going to make that 10. The width here will make uh, 20. And this length will make 40 or 30. So 10, 20, 30. All right, so there's our box right there. All right. Move it out of the way. Now, say, for example, on this box, I wanted to put this sphere. All right. Well, now, first thing it's going to do, I'm going to hit Shift. I'm going to make my sphere a little bit smaller. But I want to make this sphere in here. So I'm going to like a little divot. But I want to make sure it aligns up right in the center of this rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight both of those. I'm not going to group them, but I'm going to select both of those. Then I'm going to go to Adjust. I'm going to hit Align. And if you see, these little bars come up. And when I put my pointer on those bars, a little orange to tell you where it's going to move to. So there's a little bit of orange going to show up there. It's going to move a little bit to the left. And then it's going to move a little down. That's right in the center of this. So I can do a couple things. I could keep that ball there, or I could do something clever like click on the ball now, make it a hole, and then if I group this, there you go. I got a little divot in there. So go ahead. And try the line tool. Let's do that again. Let me just show you what that is. I'm going to go ahead and just real quick. I take a ball. I'm making a rectangle. Doesn't matter what the rectangle size is, folks. We're just trying to get this lined up. I'm going to pull this up. And I've got, I want to align it. So I'm going to make it way out of alignment. Then I'm going to select these two. All right, I'm going to select ruler. Um, excuse me, I've got those two. Now I'm going to go up to adjust, align, and now you have these little rectangles. And if I do the middle one, you can see it's going to move the ball to the middle here. There. And then that center one there. Everything's aligned. I can click on this ball here, move it down a little bit more. Boom. Now, if I change that ball to a hole, I can make a cool looking divot. And you can see I've got a little divot. I could put water in there, or whatever. All right. Raise your hand once you've done that. Let me see if there's questions on there. Let's go. Using the ruler, using the workspace, using the line, you can do a lot with this program, just doing those things.
All right. Sophie Jackson, did you get it? If you did, raise your hands or ask a question. Again, when we come to Charlotte, you're going to be able to print out the objects you have there and you can see them print. I can't get it to align. That's fine. Let's go through it together again. I'm going to start off with a rectangle. So I pull out a block. I'm going to shrink it. Oh, I'm moving it right now. I didn't mean to do that. Shrink it. I'm going to stretch it. I'm just doing this real quick, so I'm pulling it out. And now I'm going to take another object. It could be anything. Uh, pyramid. All right. And I want to put that pyramid lined up with this rectangle. So I go up to adjust. After I've selected both the pyramid and that rectangle, go to align. So that moves the pyramid over to the center. That moves it this way. Now I'm not sure I would really, this is not anything I would really do, but that's what you've got. Again, you hit adjust, align, and you can play with different things. You can even raise the height of this. It's all pretty... And then you can do a line off the edge. I mean, you can do all kinds of things with this. And it really just comes with practice. All right. Let's look at some more things over here. If you go to design, everybody, you go to properties. Here's an important. You want to name your property, your object. Start with your first name and your first name only. Don't ever put your full name on there. That's mine's Tom. And then I'm going to say uh, example. But you could be anything, whatever you want to call it. So you want to say your first name example, say. And someday when you want me to be able to get to it, you make it public. You don't have to now, you just private. And you save settings. So now it's Tom example. So I know what the prop, what it is. And when I go to open Tinkercad from anywhere, I can look for Tom example and I'll find this. That's an important thing. Don't just leave a lot of my high school students even. They just leave the name, whatever silly name Tinkercad gives them. Then they can't remember to do it. You can download it for 3D printing. Download them from Minecraft. Upload it to Thingiverse. Thingiverse is a place where there's all kinds of stuff on there. So Tom's example will show up right here in a second. And then people will, you know, you can see I... Sometimes I'm just messing around. Like all these silly name stuff, I generally delete off in a little bit. It's zoning up right now. Now, the next thing I want you to know, features really don't do a lot. Go with learn. Let me show you. Well, before real quick, you got the gallery. There it is. And you can look through the gallery for all kinds. There's a filter, my things, hot things, what people have done, newest things. Staff favorites, you can imagine. So I would just say you can do all these. Here's different things that are just coming on there. All these things you can print off, by the way. But... What you would should do now, what I really would recommend, is you do the basic lessons, if you haven't already, and do then accessories, and then pick which one of these things down here you would like to have. That jewelry, the buttons, 
cylinder earrings. Oh, goodness. Necklace, ching sings, boat right down there. That robot's kind of cool. Because that'll teach you more skills and that'll get you closer to the thing you want. Okay, let me see what this says. I don't get where to write my name. All right, let's go over here, go up to features. I mean, excuse me, go back to Tinkercad, not features. Go back to this Tinkercad. And what we're going to do is go to this. Let's bring up my example. All right, we're going to say Tinker this. So, for example, you're in there drawing your deal. When you go to Design Properties, you'll get it. So, when you're in your object, you want to save it. Go Design Properties. And that'll get you set. All right, do we have it? Okay, we have any questions? I hope that helped you out there, Sophie. All right, so what I would like you to do, and let's go ahead and get through this tutorials, um, if you can, and then next week, we're going to go ahead and import SVG graphics on this. And make sure your folks are there, because then we can upload our draw, if we do our SVG graphics, insert them in there, I'll also show you how to get on the Polar Cloud, so we can print things, all right? So, any more questions on this right now? I'm going to stay on here, but I'm going to give you some time to work on this while I'm sitting here. Ready to answer it. Oh, can I meet me? You bet, Ben. Yeah, Ben. Hey there, Ben. I need you to speak up, bud. I, I'm still not hearing you. Go ahead, please. Oh, hi, Charlie. Let me turn up my volume on my end. All right, hang on a second. All right, Charlie, go ahead. So I was just wondering, um, I was just wondering, um, what kind of graphics we're going to do next week? We're going to do what's called SVG. They're vector graphics, and they're going to allow you to, per like, uh, bring in pictures of mascots or whatever, um, different objects into your Tinkercad. All right, it's called a vector graphic. You can scale it to any size. It's actually a mathematically derived or made from math graphics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and mute you there, Ben.
Anybody else have questions as you're doing this? Just real quick, too, can you answer me a couple questions here? I'm going to... How was the how was the pacing today? Was I going too fast, too slow? No opinion, good. What did you think? This will help me for next week. Gets me to be a better teacher this way. If everybody would vote on this, it would be great. And then I'll put it up. I, I like to do things at least 80%. We've got 60%. There we go, 80%. Okay, three. I'm going to close this. Three, two, one. And here's the results. Everybody said the pacing was all right, good. All right, excellent. Let me hide those results. I'm happy to show you any of this stuff. Again, what you need. All right. Yes, you can download stuff to my, uh, Minecraft. Are you allowed to make your own shapes? Yeah, I would really recommend you do tutorials first so you get a little bit better practice, but absolutely, I would love for you to make your own shapes. Absolutely, because we're going to want to save them and then we can print out what you would like. All right, I'm going to put everybody's hands down. Let me know, do you have any questions? You should be working on like a tutorial or if you want to draw on your own object, but I guess you would get more. I think you'd get out of it if you did a couple of the tutorials. They're not long. Yes, Maddie. Um, so you said that if you're making a dice, it's important to have the numbers like in the blocks. Right. So how do you get it? How do you like get it to lower into the block so it's not like on top of it? All right, let me show you right here with this number three. Okay. I'm gonna ungroup it. First of all, to shove one in the other, you have to ungroup it. I'm gonna ungroup it. See that? And I know it's ungrouped. Why, Maddie? What's different? Right, here's the colors. Very good. Then I'm gonna click on that red, and I'm just gonna push it in there. I also, you can see the dimensions here. Okay. See? And how do you get those numbers up again? Use the ruler. Gotcha. 
Oh, the ruler, yes. All right. Forgot. No worries. All right. Okay, it's well, it's 5.30 now. What I'm going to do, one more poll here so we can kind of get a sense. Just the last quick poll. That's where we get a sense of how we're doing. All right. Got 80% voted. Okay. I'm going to close the poll, show the results, 75-25, okay. So, we've learned to do some Tinkercad, we're going to learn some more skills to get it printed on there. Um, when you're in Charlotte, then we're going to get to use a laser cutter, and most like, if time permits, which I think we will, we'll use a little bit of a vinyl cutter, but we'll certainly the laser cutter and the 3D printers, you're going to get to use a lot of. Okay. If there is no more questions, then we'll go ahead and stop the webinar. What would be great is if you would take a little bit of time over the next week and work through those first, there's like 11 tutorials. If you did the first, that would be great if you could do all of them. If you can't, don't worry about it. And then go down and pick something you want to work on and make. All right, it's better, don't just, and, and may I encourage you to make it with yours. Don't just take something from somebody else's design, we download it and we print it off. Try to find something that you made. And you can take someone else's design and that's called tinkering it, and that's totally fine. I can take you back here, here before we go. So I can go to the gallery. If it's a public thing, I can take it I can copy and tinker this and I could add my own objects to it. So I could put, I can go down there, take this cylinder, lift it up. I'm not sure why you would do this, but I'm like, you know, let's pull this up a little bit. All right, that's on the center. And I might make that. Um, a hole so you could punch a hole in that if you wanted to you could make another gun on it but then it becomes more of yours put your initials on something but try to try to make it more yours take it mod it change it don't just copy it and print it you're not going to get as much out of it okay well any more questions if not, then that's what I've got today for the webinar. Okay, right? Another, finally, before I say all right, too, is if you've got another school project, it'd be very cool to make a 3D printed object to help with your school project. Okay? All right, well, everybody take care.